Right then, another new kit, and I have a question that somebody might be able to answer for me. Right then, and this is the kit we're going to be using. Uh, what it is, is it's a stainless steel uh, honey dipper, right? Now, my hands aren't working great today, so you have to bear with me. Right, and it comes in three parts like this. Right, there's the base, which has an M10 thread. Right, and there's the little pole. And then there's the honey dipper itself. And as I said, I have a question. Right. Uh, right, I haven't done wooden honey dippers in years. Um, I've actually been waiting for to find a kit that something like this, and I eventually found one. Actually, my wife found it. Um, right, I was at a market years ago, and an apiarist, basically a beekeeper, to everybody. Uh, told me, I was actually, we were just yapping, we happened to be, happened to be on the side beside me, and we were just yapping, and I asked him about honey dippers, and he told me that uh, honey dippers made out of wood eventually become toxic, right, now he explained this to me, right, uh, the way he explained it was, right, everybody knows there's a drink called mead that's made out of honey, right, now, apparently, mead does not make you drunk. It makes you slightly high, apparently. Right? And what happens, he the way he explained it to me was, you're using a wooden honey dipper, which is porous. And each time you use it, eventually, a tiny little bit of honey starts to soak into the wood. And it'll sit there. Right? You can clean the honey dipper. You get all the stuff off the outside, but eventually, um, the honey soaks into starts soaking into the wood. Right now, the reason he brought up mead was apparently, the longer you leave mead fermenting, the stronger it gets, and eventually it will get to a toxic level. And what he told me was eventually. The honey that soaks into wood will get to that toxic level and that they're toxic now my question is has anybody else ever heard this is there anybody who watches who has a hobby of beekeeping of apiary and if so is it true as i said it was just something i heard something i was told by an expert i'm i have no idea whatsoever about keeping bees so uh I said eventually my wife uh, found these kits and uh, I'm back to making honey dippers. Right, so basically this is just a simple handle, right, with an M10 thread. Right, so we'll fly through this. Uh, I am actually up the walls at the moment, as I explained last week's video. I've just spent the morning turning hundreds of these taps because I ran out of them. Uh, anybody wants to know how to turn those tops, they're really quick, they sell great, There's, I'll leave a link up there to a video for it, right? Uh, so as I said, right, in here I have a piece of tiger wood, it's round about an inch and a half by probably six inches, right? As I said, this is just a simple um, handle video because it's a new kit and I did a series on kits before and they were very pop it was very popular so we round this off first Drill it with an M10, uh, for, uh, sorry, for an M10 tread. Uh, no, first, actually, I want to square that off. 
I want to make sure that that's very square first, and then we'll do it for the uh, for the M10. If I don't make sure this is very square, the thing is not going to sit right. Because I'm not supported, I'm going to take little cuts to make sure I don't be centered. Now we'll drill it for an M10, which is an 8.4 drill bit. Slow the light way down for this. Right. Need to go in about that far. A little faster. Check for depth. Yeah, that's good. Right, if you're drilling for one of these, if you're putting the thread in, right, always make sure that when you're drilling, you're not drilling to the tip, you're drilling to the shoulder here. Because if you look at that top of that square, the top of that's pointy, it won't fit in properly if you do if you don't. Right. Take that off, put the tap on, you flip it over, and then turn the handle. Right, so I'll do that and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, just a quick tip. After you put threads in a piece of wood, what you should always do is get some super thin super glue and drop it down into the threads and let it soak in because it will actually stiffen up those threads for you. Right, so now as I said, I'll be back in a sec when that dries. Right then, I have the mandrel on the lathe right now. This is actually the mandrel for the bottle stopper. Right? The reason I'm using this one is because that's an M10 thread. Right? Now, it's a way of um, using something that you have a number of times. Right? You can see that this little piece of plastic is wider than there. Right? That's the size for the bottle stopper. That's the size for these uh, honey dippers, right? Well, it's actually slightly small. If you're doing these, always do them slightly small to leave yourself room for sanding so that you don't sand down your mandrel size, right? So what I have to do, so anything that's an M10, I just make one of these little plastic bushings, screw it on here, and it gives me the size. It saves you having to turn a new mandrel or, have to ha or having to have a new mandrel for each piece. All you need is one of these little washers, right? You can make them out of like I do here, like plastic, or you can make them out of metal if you if you happen to have a metal lead uh, brass. You can cut on your own lead, right? It, it's just a handy thing. It saves you having to have a large number of mandrels. That's just a little tip for everybody Here to save yourself some money and some room, right? Then now we'll turn this. As I said, this is just a simple handle. Nothing crazy about it. This video is more about the kit. Showing you what's available. I'll start going down and get my size. Slightly bigger than it, which is what I'm looking for. Right, that's a bit wide. Right, make that curve a little bit more elegant. As you see, I'm staying slightly proud of that so that I can sand that. Right. 
so I'm bringing it around in. Still might be a little big for what it is. It's only a light weight kit. There, get in with a detail gouge. Shape the bottom. Now, I don't know if I've said this already, but there's not much point in me telling you where I get this kit because I buy both direct from the manufacturers because I use so many of them but the kit is available so have a look in your local wood turning shop they probably have it now grab the saw and just take that end off if you want to turn it off you can I just have a habit of doing that because it makes sure I don't accidentally touch off of it to knock it out around on the mandrel Quick handle. Right. Now I'll sand and finish that and I'll be right back. This is going to be a very quick video. Because it's just a bit of turning kit. Alright, so I'll do that and I'll be back in a sec. Alright then, just buffing the wax off the handle. Now as I said, uh, there's no point in me telling you where I get this stuff. Well, you get it from Rising Industries, okay? Right. Um, Rising is the biggest manufacturer of wood turning kits in the world. Now, the laws are slightly different where you are in the world, right? Um, right, let's just say over here, if it's made in Ireland, made in the UK, that kind of stuff, right? Only 50% of the product has to be made in that country. That includes the packaging, right? Did you ever wonder why? when you get say a pen kit or another kit they're always a separate little plastic bags people think it's for so they don't get scratched or not it is for that but it's also because that packaging counts as made in the country right uh, all countries have a thing where to be able to say made in Ireland made in the UK made in Spain made in Germany whatever right um, there must be a percentage of that product made in that country right the magic words that they use for loopholes is assembled right and uh, packaging right now the assembled thing is how they measure the amount of something made is what it costs that's how they actually measure it right now let's just say the kit we're using at the moment. Right. Now I know this kit let's is made in China, right? Uh, well, it's actually made in Hong Kong, right? Um, but let's just say this kit to bring in to England, right, costs 60 cents, all right? uh that's what that's what it costs the company who sells this in england that's what that's what this costs i'm just using 60 i'll tell you what i'll use a euro because it's 100 it's easier right let's say it costs 100 right it sells for a tenner right according to the rules only 10 percent of this is made somewhere else so in whatever country this is being sold in this can go the, a made in the uk or a made in Ireland or a made in germany made in spain sticker can go on this because it's only 10 percent made in that country and as i said they use packaging and stuff to up that as well right 
Now, the US is slightly different. The US, the wording on it is strange, right? It says, the wording on it is, most are nearly most, right? Yet again, it's measured financially, right? And um, there is only a few things that manufacturers have to actually declare, right? Uh, look, there's cars, there's wool, there's textiles. I can't remember the other ones, but there's only about six of them that they actually have to declare, right? So what you will find now, what you will find is an awful lot of kits are made in Hong Kong or China, right? They're brought into the country because it's financially less, right? As I said, in Europe, there's an actual number. In America, it's wording, right? Um, but because it's, but they're all based on finance, right? Because it's financially less than what, let's just say in the US, they consider most, a made in the US sticker can be put on that, right? Now, there are a few companies around who actually do it properly, right? There's a pen, there's a pen and kit making company in Germany, right? It's a small one. There's one in the UK. There's about half a dozen in the US and they actually make their own stuff from scratch, right? But most kits are actually made in either Hong Kong or China and brought in but because of the wording of the treaties, um, the stuff doesn't actually have to be made in that country, just a percentage of it does. And as I said, the tricks that they use are, the main one is packaging, right? And assembly, right? If that kit comes into a country, taken apart like that, right and it costs a euro but somebody has to be paid to do this and it works out that they get paid a euro to do that right then that is 50 percent financially of that kit it has been assembled in that country right that's 50 percent of that kit so that now complies with made in some country in Europe. As I said, there's no actual figure in the US. It's it's worded in a way that can be worked around, right? Um, but as I said, as I said, there's there's no sense in me actually. In you go, you, if you're going to rising, you have to order bulk. Like I order thirty of these, along with a couple of hundred pen kits and some other kits. That's there. That's to, to make it worth your while to go there. That's what you have to use, right? You have to be ordering big numbers or it's not worth your will, right? Uh, a way to do it is if you're in a wood turning club, uh, get all the club together and then you put in a big order, right? It's uh, It trades to the public as pen kits mall, right? But it's actually rising industries, right? Uh, right, now... Where was he? Yeah, yeah, we'll just stick this kit this kit together now, right? Which is a simple matter of take it off the mandrel. Right. Screw that in. Yeah. Oh, this is tight, which is what we want. Not to mention my grip is not the best, as you know. So I'll grab it. One of the handiest tools you can have if you're doing kits is one of these. It's for taking off um which becomes on cars. Um oil filters. Right. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's working this time. Right. The advantage of it is it doesn't mark anything. I want this on tight. <sighs> right, and there we have our little honey dipper, right? Now what I like about this kit is when you need to wash it, 
that will just unscrew from there. You can throw that in the dishwasher because it's stainless steel and the wood never has to get wet. Right. So there is a handy little kit. There's a full playlist on the channel of kits. I'll leave a link up there to it if anybody's interested in it. Stuff like this sells very well. Right. So uh, if you got anything out of that one, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like on the video and I'll see you in the next one.